Hey guys, my name is Matimio, and I think I've already made it abundantly clear how I am thoroughly addicted to Red Orchestra 2. And so what I wanted to do today was go over some of the reasons why I think that this game does better than a lot of other first-person shooters out there. Like, this went below the radar for me. Like, I, I, I picked up this game way after the launch, or w way after it was released, but even still, I am just riveted by this gameplay because what it delivers, it does very, very well. And so first of all, teamwork is essential. I'm not saying that in other first person shooters, teamwork isn't important. I mean, you look at Battlefield and teamwork is an essential part of that video game, but it also allows you to lone wolf it a little bit more. You guys know many people don't give a rat's ass about their team about their teammates in Battlefield. They'll go off, do their own thing, capture some objectives, kill the enemy, and overall it is helping the war effort. Like their contribution. If they're a guy who just wants to get the highest kill death ratio, well, maybe it wouldn't it wouldn't be pushing uh, the favor into their team as much as someone who was playing the objective, but they're still helping out in their own way. In Red Orchestra, while you can still have these moments, like don't get me wrong, I, I've had these flanks where I've been all by my lonesome and I've killed four or five people. It was incredible when it happened and my heart was pounding, but then I realized because I was all by myself, even though I was playing the objective, I was trying to get that nice flank off to catch the enemy by surprise, eventually when my inevitable death happened, because it will happen, even though I was able to mow down four or five people all by myself, it amounted to nothing because my team wasn't right there to continue with that push and get onto the objective. You have to remember that the awesome theme of World War II, that most weapons that you're gonna be using are semi-automatic. There are a few scattered around. There are the turrets that you can use. One of the, a couple of the classes allow you to use automatic weapons, but for the most part, the bread and butter is using semi-automatic rifles. If you play a game like Insurgency, which has that same realistic feel, I love that game as well, but it plays differently because of the weapons that you're using. You got M16A3s, AK47s, or some variants of that, and so when you get a flank off in that game, even though even though you're playing the the whole lone wolf, you're able to destroy everyone that you come across as long as your accuracy is solid. If you come across five people out in the open, there is no way in hell that you're going to be able to take each and every single one of them out with your semi-automatic rifle in Red Orchestra. It's just simply not going to happen. And so I've noticed more and more that when a team spearheads onto an objective, they're all working as a cohesive unit and pushing all at the same time, if the defensive team isn't prepared for that push and they only have a few scattered people or defenders on that side of the map, there is nothing that they can do, no matter how accurate they are with their weapons, they simply just do not have the firepower, they do not have the weaponry to take out all of those people by themselves. And so it really just solidifies and demonstrates that working with a team is paramount simply because of the mechanics in the game and the weapons that you have at your disposal. I know that some people might be turned off by this dynamic because, in reality, it can lead to some very frustrating moments. I've had nightmarish rounds where, of course, no one wanted to work together, they refused to push on up, and we just got stuck at that first couple of bases. And it sucks when that happens. It, it does lead to some very frustrating moments, but at the end of the day, when you have those experiences where you and your buddies push into a trench and you take out all of the enemies individually, and the only reason why you were able to kill all of them is because you and your buddies were working as a team. It is one of the most gratifying things that you can experience in a first person shooter. And admittedly, a lot of other video games just simply do not have that type of di dynamic because of the mechanics in their games. And so Red Orchestra 2, for what it does with teamwork, it does very, very well. Uh, one thing that took me by surprise and I was not expecting to enjoy is the suppression effect. In most shooters, I find it to be annoying. I find that it takes away from the skillful players, even though that normally you would have, been would have been able to win a firefight simply because they started to shoot at you first and they have a terrible accuracy. You're now dealing with more recoil, you're dealing with more bullet deviation depending on what your game and you're playing on, and you lose simply because that effect is in the game. And so when I jumped into Red Orchestra 2 and I learned that this effect was in the game, eh, admittedly, I was a little disappointed. But once once I played more and more, I realized that it is an important tool in your arsenal and you need to take advantage of it if you want to be successful. 
If you know that a bunch of enemies are really dug in deep in one of the trenches and you are having a very difficult time getting anywhere near them, one thing that you can do is instead of just trying to hopefully take all of them out and then push on forward, one option that you have is to lay down some suppression fire and then let the rest of your buddies swoop on in and take every single one of them out while they are fully suppressed. It is a devastating amount of suppression in this game. Your crosshair is going to be going all over the place and because, well, well, everything is basically in single fire mode, semi-automatic. If you miss a shot, it could be the difference between life and death. You can't just spray down range in here. And so I'm finding that as long as you're working with some friends and you know what you are doing, it adds in a nice tactical layer that a lot of other first person shooters attempt. I would say that Insurgency is a close second to this. I think Insurgency does suppression very, very well, but uh, simply because of all of the other mechanics in the game, it adds in a great tactical layer that I think overall enhances the gameplay. Another thing that I love, and I really wish that more video games would do this, is how you select the next map that you're going to be playing on. You know that for most shooters, Call of Duty, Halo, even Battlefield does this to some extent, you vote on the next map that you want to play. And while there's nothing wrong with that system, what I love about Red Orchestra is that the team that wins, first of all, gets to decide if they want to play an offense or a defense, and then this campaign map pops up, and depending on where you just fought and what territory you just captured it will allow you then to capture another territory and so the result of this system is that if your faction is successful in taking all the territories you win on all of the maps then you win the campaign there is this great little cinematic at the end it's you know some bells and whistles it says congratulations but what I love about it is that it gives the server a sense of progression and it gives the campaign itself a little bit of meaning to it I was on a server the other day for about four hours because we were doing amazingly well. I was playing as the allies, we were winning almost every single round, and eventually got to the point where there were only two more territories for us to capture. We had a nice tug of war, we were having a hard time securing those final two points, but eventually we were able to overcome their forces and we finally won the campaign. It gives you this sense of satisfaction of sticking through it. It really makes you want to stay and play for a lot longer than you probably should. And I, I, I love that sense of progression that you have. Like you are in a war effort. You really are trying to push the enemy back. You really are trying to take over all of this territory. And it's something that I wish a lot of more, a lot more first person shooters would adapt. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is about it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this realistic World War II gameplay. Clearly, I'm having a lot of fun, and so I hope you guys did as well. Uh, but until tomorrow, have a good one, and take it easy.